Welcome to this new topic, Dictionary. So Dictionary, if you are coming from the Python background, you may be aware about what dictionaries are. But if you are not, then Dictionary is basically a key value pair. So in the previous video, we have seen the tuples which are having, or specifically if I talk about named tuples, which were having the names assigned to a tuple. In a similar way, dictionaries are basically named data type in which you have one value as a key, another value as a value. So this way it is a properly defined structure and in many ways it is also fast. So let's see how we can create a dictionary here in Julia. So let's say we want to define it for or we want to define or create a cars structure. So DICT is what you need to write and then maybe car one or maybe the brand one and the price maybe hundred thousand then car two car oops car two and yeah one more thing it's not equals to but that's the proper sign car two is two hundred thousand and then car three car three is 300,000 and let's enter once we enter it will create the cars dictionary for us which will be having all of these car 1 2 and 3 as you can see the three entries so dictionary it's of type string as you can see and integer 64 so key are string and values are in integer 64 so this way our dictionary is created and how we can access it it's very simple so first we need to write cars and accessing it is very simple or similar to array within the brackets we will going to write car one and it will give its respective value so this way calling it in a program if you have a dictionary like this calling it in a program with a named you know value which is for hundred thousand Will be very easy also it is efficient for the processor to process this data and from your normal data type it is way much faster when you apply it in a big program where there is a lot of computing power which your which your variables are taking in that case you may want to apply it the dictionaries which will make your program way much faster than the previous program so let's see some more examples of it all right so Another way you can define the dictionary is very simple. So maybe dict dictionary two or cars two equals to dictionary. And over here you have car one. So that's that's the difference basically. Here you are having within the double quotes. But if you don't want the double quotes, what you can do is you can start with a colon and say car one. So car one equals to 100, maybe 100,000 the previous value that we had and then car 2 car 2 is your 200,000 and finally the car 3 which is the 300,000 and if you press enter shift enter you have again dictionary similar dictionary created like this the only difference is you don't have to have that hassle of uh, starting the double quotation and ending the double quotation just with the colon you can start it and then it, it the only change another change is its symbol instead of string so how you can access this symbol or this particular value well it's similar the cars two and within that you have car one that's it so over here also just specify the symbol and you don't have to really open the double quotation and close the double quotation also there may be scenarios where you need to define the numbers first and the respective translation of that number in the double quotation like a string over here for example in many times in the businesses we have to define what is high low and medium threshold for example if you are achieving the sales targets that is like uh, high or anything which is meeting or above the meeting the target then it is high if you are somewhere around 60 to 70 percent 
they are medium if you are be below 50 percent that is low so these are all just made up values just to show you an example but this is how you basically define that anything going below 50 percent is is low anything which is or which is in between of 50 to 70 percent it is medium or anything which is above 100 which is above or equal to 100 percent is basically high so this way it can be vice versa that you have the uh, 100 uh, or value the number value over here and the strings value over here is perfectly fine it it's not the case that it will go only like this you can define strings like these targets which are or the thresholds which i just mentioned all right now let's move ahead and try to identify some of the operations which will be very very useful in the programming one thing is whether the particular dictionary has a particular key or not so the function to do that the inbuilt function is has key as the name suggests it checks whether the dictionary has the key or not so for example we have uh, cars 2 and within cars 2 we want to check whether the car 1 is present or not so it's saying true that means it's present but what if, if I check it for car 4 it will say false so these are like the conditional statements that you need to check whenever you are in a process or you are uh, doing a programming and these these conditions will help you uh, write the right logic so let me just go up a little bit yep we are good and now let's see how we can delete a particular key from the dictionary so for that the word is delete and this is exclamation sign that means we are continuing with the um, delete operation or the mutable option so we need to first specify the di dictionary why i'm writing dict2 it's cars2 <laughs> maybe i wrote a previous example with that um, and then i need to remove car1 so cars2 if i'm not wrong that's yep yeah, that's right cars2 and if i just go ahead and execute it's car 3 and 2 now car 1 has been deleted so that's like uh, for example suppose car 1 has been discontinued and you have checked it with the has key that whether the whether the cars 2 has the car 1 or not so now in this case false because we have removed it but let's say if it was true and if it is a discontinued product you may want to delete it and that's how you basically build the entire program based on the different types of condition the next thing i want to show you and let me just go up so the next thing i want to show you whether how you can see all the keys which are present in the dictionary so as you can see the function is very very straightforward it's cars one and let's execute what is that car one let me see or just cars okay cars and it will show all the keys that it has so it's helpful in scenarios like when you need to iterate over each key and probably need to modify the value or do some processing for the value similarly for the values what you can do is you can come over here and write values if you want to see all the values that are present in the cars dictionary so this way you not only have the function to check the keys but also to check the values so for that when we execute it this is basically the uh, all the values that you have for cars the car one two and three hundred thousand two hundred thousand and three hundred thousand finally just to conclude this video i will show you the last function which is very helpful what if if i need to merge two different dictionaries well very simple i will create a dictionary 3 and merge use the merge function we you have seen it earlier as well and we will write dictionary 1 and dictionary 2 and when sorry cars and cars 2 and when i execute it will be the the merge dictionary so you have colon car 3 you have car 3 in double quotation but you don't have in colon car 1 because if you remember we have deleted it 
So that's about how you can work in the dictionaries. It's very, very easy. As you can see, initially, it will be a bit daunting task where you need to define, you need to follow a proper structure, whether with the symbol or with the double quotation, or like I mentioned with the numerical values as a keys, and then using it, the different functions that you have inside the dictionary to access, delete, uh, find the values, find the keys or merging the dictionaries. So that's about it and now I will meet you in the next topic.